Good evening, everybody. We're happy to see you here tonight. Let's stand, please. Taking our songbooks, turning to song number 658. Song 658, bring them in. We'll sing the first and third verse. First and third verse, song 658. Hark, tis the shepherd's voice I hear Out in the desert, dark and drear Calling the sheep who've gone astray Far from the shepherd's fold away Bring them in, bring them in Bring them in from the fields of sin Bring them in, bring them in Bring the wandering ones to Jesus Out in the desert hear their cry Out on the mountain wild and high Marked as the master speaks to thee Go find my sheep where'er they be. Bring them in, bring them in, bring them in from the fields of sin. Bring them in, bring them in, bring the wandering ones to Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Good to see everybody here tonight. Uh, I've got. Uh, haven't really spoken to Pastor, but I heard uh, that the weather down there has been fantastic. We've got rain every day, and there got sunshiny and sunshine and uh, probably 80 degrees or so. So I'm uh, kind of jealous, a little jealous, but that's all right. That's all right. You pray that uh, when they come home Saturday, they have tra so, so, ah, safe travel mercies as they work their way back here and we should see them Sunday morning so looking forward to that uh, some announcements before we get ready for the uh, offering uh, just remember the uh, teens are going to the First Baptist Church of Kenmore for a youth rally on Friday October 12th uh, you know if you ever wanted to go as a chaperone I'm sure they wouldn't turn you away uh, you get it uh, 20 30 unruly kids no, they're not unruly, are they? <laughs> no, so-so. Uh, you get, it's the leader. Oh, yeah, that's the one we got to watch out for. So if you want to keep an eye on Josh and Rebecca when uh, they're going to the youth rally, you want to volunteer, you want to volunteer and be a, a chaperone, that'd be a great thing. Uh, let the kids show how you can cut the rug and stuff. I don't know. Uh, that's going, to, going on on uh, Friday, October 12th. Uh, if you need any uh, questions answered, make sure you talk to uh, Josh and he'll get those answered for you. Uh, we uh, done collecting for the college care packages, right? College care packages? All right, we're shipping them out on Friday, so if you still got something laying around the house that you wanted to get in here, uh, do it quickly so we can uh, get those packages in the mail, let the young people know at the colleges that we're... Uh, back home, we're still thinking about them. We love them and care about them, and uh, we're praying for their success in whatever endeavors they choose to in their lives. Uh, veterans meeting uh, meeting at Thursday evenings at 7 p.m. back in uh, the church in room uh, 122A. If you got any questions, don't forget to see John Gray or Marty Gennant. Uh, ladies meeting coming up on Saturday, October 20th, from 12:30 to 2:30. Theme for this meeting is who come dressed. At, is that like an owl who or just who? Who? who. Uh, come dressed as a Bible character for a chance to win a gift card. Costume categories are best costume and most original. Gift cards will be Applebee's and Twisted Melt. Uh, bring a brunch style food to share. Costumes are not required to attend. Please come and enjoy some food, fellowship, and fun. The three F's there. Uh, harvest party at the Orcs uh, house will be October uh, 20th. Boy, October is a jam-packed month, isn't it? I'm telling you. That's uh, going to be on October uh, 20th from 4 to 9 p.m. at their house in Parkman. And uh, if you didn't get a flyer in the bulletin this past Sunday, I think there might be some flyers in the back. And uh, get an address there. Make sure you get, uh, get those... Uh, uh, that information we look forward to seeing you there 
the biggest one is if you're going to have uh, a child participate in a candy scramble, please bring a bag of candy for each child you're going to bring. So they kind of take a bunch of hay or straw and they mush it up and they put the candy inside the hay or the straw and then they say go and the kids beat up each other and try and steal the candy from each other. And, you know, they come away uh, bruised and bleeding and all that stuff, but you know how they, they're just emulating the adults, right? <laughs> See the adults if they're ever in a game and stuff. And also, last but not least, there will be a Senior Moments Dinner game night on Saturday, October 27th at 4 p.m. at the church. Ham will be provided. Please sign up in the, for a side dish or dessert if you plan to attend. There is a sign-up sheet in the ministry hallway on the Seniors Moments board. Please bring your favorite board game to play. Who plays chess? Anybody play chess? Oh, Mrs. Pelkey, I found a chess player. I'll bring chess that night, and we'll just get lost. But and I know how the pieces move, basically, and I'm trying to learn. Uh, but right now, I just play against the computer, and you know, I'd say 19 games out of 20, the computer wins. So I'm still learning <laughs> that way. But uh, you'll play me then, <laughs> okay? But uh, I get lucky every once in a while. You know, that old blind squirrel finds the nut, right? All right, at this time, the ushers are going to come forward. We'll have a uh, prayer for the offering. Anybody have anything special happen to them this, in these past couple of days since Sunday? Anything special? Nothing. We all lead boring lives. Get up, go to work, come home, eat. Yes, Donna. You got a new pickup truck. Congratulations. Uh, a new to you, a new to you pickup truck. Very nice. I think Terry Brendel got a new pickup truck too to him. New to him truck. <laughs> so, amen. Yes. I'm sorry. A new puppy Monday through Friday. That that's a chore in itself. Just oh boy, boy they. No, oh, <laughs> little little puppies, they get into everything, don't they? they got a lot of energy. I, they're almost like a little kid, just the energy. You don't know where they get it from. You know, by by noontime, I'm all ragged when my grandkids are around. It's like, hey, isn't it time for a nap? No, Grandpa, I'm eight years old. I don't take naps anymore. No, let's take a nap anyway. <laughs> but, oh, I know how that goes. So, All right, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessings on us tonight. Thank you once again for all the goodness you uh, have for us. And Lord, we do think of uh, Sheila Teal as she's continuing to uh, recover. Just be with her, Lord. Bless her, touch her body, and heal her up. Give the doctors wisdom there so they know what's going on. And for the others that might be uh, sick, for Mrs. Meredith and, and Ruth, just uh, continued physical uh, ailments that they're going through, just uh, bless them, Lord, at this time. Uh, as we take the offering, may the, uh, it meet the needs of the church, Lord, that we might get the gospel out to the folks in Streetsboro and the other ministries uh, that we have that go all the way around the world. Thank you for the faithfulness of your people. I just uh, pray that you will bless this and bless us tonight uh, for being here. May your word be preached, the Holy Spirit be present, and uh, when we leave today, we'll praise your name and say it was good to be in the house of the Lord for it's in your name we ask amen After we sing the next song, uh, Brother Josh is going to come up and uh, preach for us tonight. Looking forward to that. Always love to hear what this young man has, what the Lord has laid on his heart. 
Uh, let's stand, please, taking our song books, turning to song number 689. Song 689, I am bound for the promised land. Once We'll sing the first and fourth verse once again. First and fourth verse, 689. On Jordan's stormy banks I stand and cast a wistful eye to Canaan's fair and happy land where my possession lie. I am bound for the promised land. I am bound for the promised land. We good? There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Aiden Austin, how's it going, guys? Two of our teenagers. I don't think I see anybody else out there, as far as teenagers. All right. Um, first off, just want to say thank you to Pastor for giving me this opportunity uh, to get up bef uh, before the church and uh, preach out of uh, God's Word, and I um, hope that they're having a wonderful time, a very well-deserved vacation. Uh, Pastor and his family are uh, uh, a big... Uh, uh, a part of this church, obviously, but um, they do a lot for our church, and uh, they definitely uh, are on a very well-deserved vacation. Um, but unfortunately, that means you're stuck with the likes of me. Um, I have a cell phone right here, and as always, I uh, try to get out. Eight o'clock is when we need to be out, correct, Mr. Stamatis? All right, got my cell phone set for five till. It's going to start bzz, bzz. If you hear some strange bumblebee noises up here, it's just my phone. Don't worry, there's not a, a tac killer bees coming after us. But that tells me you better be quiet soon. Um, anyway, um, but uh, before I do continue, I just want to say thank you to everyone that does serve in our church. Um, I could stand here all night and go through each individual person from the bus ministry to the nursery to kids club to, to Friday nights, you know, the, the whole uh, umbrella of different ministries that are here. Uh, without your help, this, uh, this church uh, would not be as... Um, <clears throat> <laughs> someone's texting me right now. <clears throat> I'm like, wait, it's not 7.55 already, jeez. Anyway, um, you guys. Uh, anyway, um, but uh, thank you so much for, for your, uh, your servanthood and, and what you guys do for the, ch for, for the church and for, for the cause of Christ. And uh, of course, cannot uh, stand up here without thanking my beautiful, wonderful wife for always uh, standing there with me. And uh, working with the teenagers. And, yeah, that's right. Yeah, there we go. But um, how's everybody doing tonight? Good? Awesome, awesome. Uh, as Aiden and Austin were standing there, you know, I, working with teenagers is a blast. I, it is so much fun. There's a lot of highs and lows, and it's, it's kind of predictable, too. I noticed some of you said, good, good, good. Well, that's one of the very predictable things with teenagers. You ask them any question, and it's good. How was your weekend? Good. How was homecoming? Good. How are your grades doing? Good. It's a lot of fun. So we have uh, quite the conversation, uh, mostly one-sided, of course. But anyway, thank you so much for coming this evening. Um, tonight, uh, before I pray, we will be in, uh, in Proverbs. Um, we'll be dancing around, bouncing around all over the, all over the place in Proverbs. Um, a Bible study. I love studying God's Word. I love uh, looking uh, at uh, different things in God's Word and picking them apart. I know last time I was up here, we uh, went through the, briefly, quickly, 
uh, because of time's sake, but we went through the book of Esther, and I, I thoroughly enjoyed that kind of stuff, and hopefully you did as well. And tonight we're going to be looking at uh, marks of a foolish Christian, or, or marks of, of, of a fool. There's many different uh, 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 maxims or, or examples or uh, uh, aphorisms in God's Word or, or pithy ob- observations, uh, uh, and they, they, they pit one side to another. And, and one of the things is, here God kind of, in, in the book of Proverbs, it says, a fool does this, or a wise Christian does this, or a fool is this. And I hope to take some of those this evening and maybe go through some of them with you. Um, and I hope that um, it's a blessing to you. I hope, again, maybe it's, if it's not something new, it's just a, a refresher to you. Um, some of these things are things that I, uh, that I know this youth group struggles with. I know that myself, I've caught myself struggling with these things in the past. And I, for sure, one, don't want to be called a fool. I don't want to stand before God someday or kneel before God someday after this life is over. And God looks at me, man, Josh, you are a real fool down on earth. <laughs> That's one thing I definitely don't want and uh, there are some different things in here that I think that we can learn from, and God is very, very specific on that. So let's pray, and we'll dive right in, and we will be in Proverbs chapter 1 to start. So let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this wonderful evening. Thank you so much for each and every one of these uh, 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 church members that are here, Father, and uh, any visitors, and uh, I pray that you'll give them a special blessing for coming this evening. I pray that you'll keep us uh, safe as we travel home. Father, I pray as we dive into your word. Holy Spirit, that it will be your words and not my words. I'm nothing but a servant for you, Father, and I pray that uh, maybe we'll get something out of, uh, out of your word this evening that we may need. And that each and every one of us are different, and each and every one of us li- live different lives and have different parts in this, this, uh, uh, this machine of the church that we have. And, and Father, I pray that we'll get what we need this evening, or maybe some things will be revealed to us this evening. And uh, Father, I pray for a pastor and his family as they're on vacation. I pray that they're, that they have good weather. I pray that they're enjoying themselves and getting lots of sun, and uh, I pray that we'll bring some of that back with them. <laughs> and all these things we ask in your precious and holy name, amen. All right, if you're in the uh, book of Proverbs, we're going to be looking at chapter number one to start off this evening, and we're going to start in verse number seven. All right, we're going to start in verse number seven. And again, God here uh, is uh, comparing two things. He says this, he says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Again, let's read that again. The fear. The fear. It's an interesting word that's used here. And there's two kinds of fears, and we'll get into that one second, that, 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 uh, that, that, we, can just, that we can use to, uh, to put here. But there's a certain fear that God wants us to have for Him. And of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. All right, The beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Um, there's, again, as I was saying, there's two kinds of fears. There's servile fear, and there's a filial fear. Now, servile fear, I do not believe from studying the Scripture, servile fear is not the kind of fear that God wants us to have for Him. And, and I guess before I preface all of this, I believe that most of the problems in our life, most of the, the, the trouble that we get ourselves into, and as I look at these uh, eight or so things, uh, these aren't all of the, the, the things that God tells us uh, what a fool is out of God's Word, but, but eight of the most, um, that, that, that are the most common, I think, amongst church members today, amongst uh, the youth group, as I've seen amongst even my own life, um, we're going to go through these, but... I believe that if we just had a proper fear for God, a lot of the issues in our life wouldn't be there. Many a times things happen in our life where we do things because we don't have the proper fear of God. We don't. Um, And uh, and let's let's continue. The the first kind of fear that I mentioned is servile fear. Now, servile fear, again, is the kind of fear that a prisoner in a torture chamber or a slave has for a harsh taskmaster, all right? Uh, servile fear refers to a posture of servitude uh, towards a malevolent uh, owner. All right? Now, I don't believe that's the kind of fear that God would have us to be. At times, there may, that may be uh, appropriate, but I believe the kind of fear that God wants us as Christians to specifically have, a wise Christian, not a foolish Christian, uh, but a wise Christian, who will, uh, will, who will, uh, uh, which is the beginning of understanding, of wisdom and understanding is uh, fil- filial fear. Excuse me, it's F I L I A L, in case you're taking notes. Filial fear. That refers to the fear that a child has to his father. A child who has tremendous uh, respect and love for his mother and father and who dearly wants to please them. All right? He has the fear or an, or an, or an anxiety of offending 
his loved ones, not because of torture or punishment, but rather because he is afraid of displeasing the one who, that, who is, in, who is the, the world to that child. All right? It is the source of security and love. A healthy adoration for God and a, a righteous fear of falling into his hands. I believe this evening that if we had that sort of fear, a lot of the things that we go through life, we would not have the problem with. The sin that we can't seem to shake, if we had that proper uh, uh, fear and uh, that proper uh, worry of displeasing our Father, of worrying about falling into our Father's disciplining but loving and firm hands, I think we would not be in the situations that we find ourselves uh, stuck in in many times. But the Bible is very clear that, uh, again, the fear of the Lord or that, that, uh, that uh, childlike respect and love and, and, and that, that want to not displease his, uh, his, his or her father is the kind of fear I believe that God wants us to have for him on a daily basis. All right, And uh, it says the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instructions. And I believe, uh, again, a fool is not going to fear God. A fool is not going to have that kind of fear and will not, unfortunately, benefit from those, uh, those principles of God. Again, we will, uh, we will go through this very, very quickly because of time's sake. And again, just a quick study. Um, let's continue. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 14. Proverbs chapter number 14. And we're going to be in verse number 9. <clears throat> All right, let's read. Fools make a mock at sin. The Bible tells us that fools make a mock at sin, but among the righteous there is favor. We don't take sin seriously sometimes. And the Bible tells us here that the fool mocks sin. The foolish person, the foolish Christian, does not take sin seriously. Doesn't take uh, 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 righteousness seriously, therefore takes uh, uh, sin foolishly. Therefore, doesn't uh, worry about the consequences of sin or the death and destruction that follows sin and uh, mocks at sin. Or rather, sin makes a fool of us. So many times we feel like uh, we have control on our sin or, or even into our addictions. You know, on Friday nights, I see a lot of um, uh, teenagers that come in, more so obviously in the adults, but there are some teenagers that come in that have. Um, have different addictions that, uh, that they're struggling with, different, different ball and chain that they can't seem to, to be able to shake off, different, different things that no matter what they do, it's their vice. It's the thing that, that grips them the most. And, and they, they see victories in different areas of their life, and they're, and they're happy, and they're, and they're joyful, and they're, and they're growing. But to each and every one of us, typically, there's always that one thing that seems to shake us. And many a times we feel that we can control it. Many a times we feel uh, that, uh, uh, that we, uh, at any point we can turn it off. At any point, just like turning a light on and off, we can turn that switch off. But in all reality, folks, this evening, sin makes a mock at us. And the Bible tells us that fools make a mock at sin. Are we serious with our sin this evening? Do we look at ourselves? Do we look ourselves in the mirror daily? Do we, as we get on our hopefully on our knees and read God's word as we pray daily, do those are those sins in our lives evident to us? Are we without necessarily saying it? Are, are we? Is that sin making a mockery of us? Are we allowing ourselves to be fooled by the sin in our life? Are we not taking our sin seriously? Because if if I'm not mistaken, sin only lasts for a season. There's going to be death and destruction. There will be pain from that sin that we're involved in and the fool mocks sin and sin will make you a slave and that appetite will have to be filled it'll want more and more and more and it'll it will uh, uh, plant a seed in your heart and it, it will uh, attack you from from different angles and when you when you think that you had that you have uh, overcome that sin something else from a different angle comes in and it's 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 not easy but as christians are we continually working towards uh, uh, eschewing the sin as, as Job, as it talks about Job in God's Word, are we, are we busily working to get rid of the sin in our life? Or, we're, or are we complacent with it? Are, is our conscience so seared to where we don't even realize that, it's, that it's, it's sin anymore? You know, there's a lot of things, and you know, I was, I was um, talking to Rebecca, I, I can't remember the exact top of it, I was thinking to myself, you know, there's a lot of things over time we get so complacent, we get so apathetic, and it's not even necessarily that we mean to, to be that way, 
But so many times in my life, I notice things, and I'm like, you know what? I don't feel any conviction on this, but I know God's Word says it's wrong. Well, I, need to, I need to fix something here. How am I not being convicted on this? Have I, have I really, uh, uh, has sin really made a mock of me that long? Have I been in its chains for that long that I don't even realize what I'm doing anymore? Does it not convict me anymore? Is it just, just uh, do I not even realize what I'm doing anymore? And God's word is very, very specific. Again, fools make a mock of sin, all right? Um, sin will give you broken promises and, and uh, mocks us by uh, unforeseen consequences. Again, please, 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 Christian, this evening, uh, uh, in, in all of our lives, I know there are more than likely things that we uh, should be taking a, a closer look to, putting a microscope on it. And I pray this evening that as we go through some of these things, if there's something that uh, you notice, I pray that uh, you'll, you'll take care of that maybe this evening. But again, is, 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 is sin making you a slave? Are you a mock of sin? Are you a, a fool uh, uh, are you being a foolish uh, with, with the sin in your life? Number three, let's continue on. I do not want to keep you. Proverbs chapter 20. Proverbs chapter 20. Verse number three. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 20, verse number three. It is an honor for a man to cease from strife. It's a good thing for a man to cease from strife. But every fool will be meddling. All right? Meddling in other people's business. All right, uh, it is an honor for a man to cease from strife. Strife is angry or bitter disagreement over fundamental issues. All right, we are to cease from strife. The wise uh, Christian, the wise man, wise woman will cease from strife. All right, to dwell from or without strife, uh, donating to the habit of life. All right, there's a, a, an awesome example of how we should treat one another and not to make sure that we're not uh, meddling and make sure that we're not causing strife. And I, I tell, and we'll get to that in a minute. We'll turn to Genesis chapter 13 while you're turning there. Genesis chapter 13, there's a few verses, there's a story there of a perfect example of how to deal with uh, uh, strife uh, when, it, when it arises, it's ugly head. But, um, you know, the one thing that I, I tell the teenagers a lot, I said, listen, life is tough. I said, being a Christian is, is, is not easy. It's, I tell them it's not a bed of roses. God never promised us an easy life, but he promised us an, an eternal life in heaven, praise the Lord. But I tell them, I said, listen, it's hard enough that we fight against our sinful flesh. It's hard enough that we fight against Satan and, and, and those principalities and those, and, and, and those things uh, that are not of this world. And then we have to fight amongst ourselves. And there's division and there's strife. And if you've worked with any teenagers, it's, it can be very prevalent. And it's, it's a constant struggle, and it's, and it's, and it's a thing that, I, that Rebecca and I and the workers, have to, we see and we have to constantly uproot and have to constantly sweep the dust and that nonsense out of the youth group, because that does happen amongst young people. It's just, just one of those things. There's always a lot of drama, always a lot of strife, always a lot of division, always a lot of meddling and, and, and rumors and, and, and getting in other people's business. And, that, and it's just not a good thing for God's people to be doing that to one another. It's hard enough to live this life. The daily grind, as Mr. Stamatis got up here and said, you know, anything new. And we had some people, got some new trucks, amen. But uh, going to work, waking up, it's, it's, not, it's, it's, it's a daily grind. It's not always easy. It's not always a, 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 a fun week that you may have. You know? and, and then we, we come to church or we come to a youth group or we come to a, a meeting on a Wednesday night hoping for, for a, a spiritual food and all we have is, is division or strife and, and maybe that we're bringing to the plate or that is going, it's, it's, not, it's not going to make our church successful at all or productive at all. All right, Genesis chapter 13. Um, I just wanted to uh, go through this very quickly. It's a, a wonderful story. Just the, the patience and the righteousness and the honor that is shown here uh, is unbelievable. And it's a great example for us. Uh, Genesis chapter 13. Bear with me as I get there. Genesis chapter 13, verse number 1. And we're going to read to verse 12. All right. And Abram went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, all that he had, and lot with him into the south. And Abram was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. And he went on his journeys from the south, even to Bethel, unto the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and Hai, unto the place of the altar, which he had made there at the first. And there Abram called on the name of the Lord. And Lot also, which went with Abram, had flocks and herds and tents. And the land was not able to bear them, that they might dwell together, for their substance uh, sub was, was great, excuse me, so that they could not dwell together, all right? 
So they travel, uh, they're, they're, they're camping together, and they have, both of them have great big flocks. And the, the substance or, or uh, the, the plains, the fields, that, that which the flock would be eating was just not enough to sustain both of their massive flocks, all right? So we uh, start to see a problem here. Uh, ver- uh, chapter number seven, and there was strife between the herdmen of Abram's cattle and the herdmen of Lot's cattle. And the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwelled uh, then in the land. And Abram said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdmen and thy herdmen. For we be brethren. Is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan, and it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zor. Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves the one from the other. And Abram dwelled in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent toward Sodom. And it's a simple story, but it's, it's, it's amazing. Abram was quick. To, he saw the strife, he was quick to say, you know what, it's not that big of a deal. You know what I'm going you know to do? I'm going to prefer you over me. When's the last time we've preferred someone else over ourselves? Aren't we supposed to do that, preferring one another? You know, our, our, where's that attitude of, 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 of godly, Christ-like love for each other in this church? I know we're all from different backgrounds, and, 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 and oh my goodness, working with teenagers, we have different ages, we have different schools, we have different backgrounds, we have all sorts of different likes, and they can be very uh, outspoken uh, about those different things. And um, if we're not careful, it can turn into strife, it can turn into a fight, but, but uh, let's be careful to not allow those things to drive a wedge between our relationships here in the church. We're all a, a different part of the body of Christ, we're all just as important as the next person, just as important as, as a, of, a, of a task, of a, of a job, a, of a calling as the next person. Let's prefer one another. Let's love one another. Let's care about one another. Let's not allow uh, uh, ourselves to, uh, to, to meddle in each other's business and, and, and allow that strife. Fools will meddle. He is always ready to begin strife and is obstinate to the, uh, to the continuance of it. He's a quarreler, will not hold himself from contention, thus will have no care for his honor and dignity, nor God's commands. All right? Let's continue on. Um, Proverbs chapter 10. If we could turn to Proverbs chapter 10. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 10. Verse number 18. He that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. All right? Um, a fool, again, in, in verse... Um, Verse number, number 18, he that hideth hatred with lying lips and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. Again, God is very, very specific here that defamation and telling untrue things about one another to others uh, is wrong. And uh, we, we've got to be, we have got to be careful about that. It is so easy. I had a, an example to the teenagers. Actually, Mrs. Wilson actually gave me that. Uh, she had an illustration Friday she was talking about. It. Mrs. Wilson, I did use that illustration with the teenagers and they loved it. Now, if you know the teenagers, you know, when they tried to, well, anyway, I'll, I'll tell you in a second. So anyway, so the example was this. I said, I said, teenagers, <clears throat> I said, uh, I had four tubes of toothpaste. And I said, teenagers, I said, uh, I called four people up. We had, we had two teams Friday night, or two teams. And I said, all right, I need two people from this team, and I need two people from this team. And of course, they all rushed the, the front. <laughs> so we picked two, we picked four people, excuse me. And I said, all right, there's two, there were two, uh, or excuse me, four uh, plastic plates there. And I said, all right, here's what I want you to do. I said, I want you uh, to squeeze the, this tube of toothpaste out as fast as you can onto this plate. Whoever does it wins. All right, and of course, they always ask, is there money involved? Is there snacks involved? No, just get the thrill of victory, okay? Just, just bear with me. So I say, go. And they start squeezing, and they got, I'd say, I don't know, maybe under 10 seconds for sure. Maybe, I think the, the, the one young man, I think it was um, like six seconds, five seconds. He was quick. He's just like, Phew. he had a plan. He was thinking while I was, while I was talking up there, just uh, giving him uh, instructions on how to, how to play this, uh, this game, per se. He was thinking. He had a plan. He was like rolling it up, and, and he was just squeezing it down. He won uh, by a long shot. It was pretty amazing. And then I said this, though, and I said, uh, uh, I didn't have toothpicks, though. I had pens, so I used pens. I said, all right. I said, uh, now, what I want you to do is I want you to take these pens here. So, okay, we take the pens, all right. And I want you to put the toothpaste back in the tube. 
And of course, if you've worked with any of our teenagers, they look at me like, Good? No. <laughs> no, they look at me like, um, what are you talking about? And then the ideas come. Well, do you have a drill? Well, do you have any scissors? Well, I'm going to make the hole bigger. What if I shove the pen into the, into the toothpaste and make the hole bigger? And I can, I'm like, no, 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 no. You're missing the point. <sighs> Just take the pen, and I want you to try to scoop it into. Well, that's stupid. That's not going to work. There's plenty of other ways we can do this. Hey, anybody got a pair of scissors? I'm like, oh, my God. You're missing the point. All right, I said this. I said, listen. I said, it's so easy for us. How easy is it for us to just spew things out of our mouth, right? It's so easy for us to, to be harsh to one another. It's so easy for, one, for, for, for us to, to start speaking ill of one another. It's so easy. We don't have to lift a finger. I mean, it is so easy. Let me be honest. With you. It's very easy, right? Let's be honest. But once it's out there, you really can't backpedal, can you? The damage is done. It's not like your, lo- your words are floating in your front of your face. You can grab them and go, you, you can't, it, it's, it's, it's over. It's done. You can't do it. It's, very, it. it's extremely, if not impossible, to backpedal from that. We have got to be careful. We have to be careful, uh, 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 Christian people, this evening on, 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 how, uh, on, our, on our words. The Bible is very specific. It says, listen, he says, uh, he that, uh, um, excuse me, uh, he that hideth hatred with lying lips and, and that uttereth a fool, or excuse me, slander is a fool, hideth hatred, flattering words and a false pretense of friendship. All right, be careful what we say. What we can say uh, could last uh, a lifetime for somebody. What we say could uh, make or break somebody in the ministry. Um, you know, as working with teenagers, it's, it's always um, very difficult, some of the stories that, that, um, that I find out or that, that uh, just getting to know them, they'll open up. And there's many, you know, there's many relationships. Uh, I can count, I can't even count on both of my hands, on my fingers, how many different times teenagers have come to me and said, yeah, I lost my temper, I said this, and I knew I shouldn't have, and that person won't speak to me anymore. I lost that relationship, or I, or I lost this connection, or, um, you know, this person completely doesn't even believe in God anymore because I lost my temper, or I said something I shouldn't have. Our words are a huge impact. We don't realize it, but it's very, very important to be careful what we say, all right? Well, let's continue. Proverbs chapter 26. I am watching the time, no worries. Proverbs chapter 26, verse number 11. All right. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 26, verse number 11. As a dog returneth to his vomit, so a fool lost my place, returneth to his folly. As a dog returneth to his vomit, so a fool returneth to his folly. Excuse me. A fool is uh, incorruptible. A person and their tendencies that are not able to be corrected, improved, or reformed. All right? Uh, Now, this this phrase, um, as a dog returneth to his vomit, so a fool returneth to his... uh, uh, um, Excuse me, I keep losing my place here. Return to his folly, excuse me, uh, is, a, is a terse saying. It's an astute observation. And that's one, one of the things I love about Proverbs. It, has, it, it is filled with these. It's a distinct uh, definition. Now, if you, if you have a dog, I'm sure you can relate to this. I have a dog. His name's Diego. I love Diego. Some of my teenagers don't like Diego because he doesn't like them. He, he's, he, he doesn't like men for some reason. I don't know. But um, he, he loves, my, he's a mama's boy. He loves my wife to death. Um, I, guess, I guess I'm okay. I don't know. I, I take him for walks and I feed him. I don't know. So. But he loves her to death. But anyway, so he does some silly things sometimes and some ridiculous, crazy things sometimes. And, and I can remember uh, just, just reading to this and, 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 uh, and, and, and relating it to my own life maybe sometimes. But so there, was, there, was, there have been times where my little dog has been sick. And there's been times where my little dog has and or been a big pig, and he'll eat something he shouldn't, or without chewing, he'll just inhale something. And then he acts like he's going to throw up. I'm like, dude, no, what are you doing? Come on, man. And so I have to sit there with him, and, and you know, he's kind of making those, those nasty noises that sometimes we get when we're sick. It's kind of gross, isn't it? But anyway, 
And, uh, and sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes it just passes and he's fine. Other times, though, he'll throw up. And it's like, no. And, of course, I have taken him and I have put him somewhere where if he does throw up somehow, it's not going to be on the carpet or anything crazy. Uh, but anyway, and, and he throws up. And what do you think he tries to do as soon as he throws up? Guess what he tries to do? He tries to eat. I'm like, no, what are you doing, dummy? And I'm like, that's disgusting. And I said... Did you not forget just a few seconds ago that which was vexing you, that which, which, which was a burden on you, which was making your life miserable, was, was ruining your day? Did you just literally forget? You, and, and I know you felt a lot better after that. And then, you try, to, then you, try to go, you try to go back and do the same exact thing over again. And then he'll lap it up. And then he'll throw, you know, and then... And then Sorry, I'm making some of you sick. Or some of you don't like to talk about, oh, I'm sorry, I'll stop talking about throw up. But anyway, but um, are we that as a Christian? Are we quick to forget those things, th- those sins or those things in our life that, uh, that beset us? Are, we're so quick to run back to those things. Oh, it's going to be different this time. Or, oh, I, I, I can handle it. I know how to, I know how to uh, control it a, a little bit better this time. A dog to lick that which, uh, uh, which the, he vomited forgets how burdensome and how vexatious it was to him, excessive indulgence. We don't learn from our past mistakes. As Christians, uh, uh, um, in the Bible, hey, learn from your past mistakes. Christians, are we learning from our past mistakes? Are we continuing, are we continuing to, to, uh, to act uh, as if we were a child again? As, as many, most of us in here are adults, if we think back to our teenage years, um, there were some pretty dumb things that we did, right? Some pretty very foolish things or, or, or very silly things or things that we look back now we're like, oh man, <laughs> I was a weirdo or, or you know, whatever the case may be or I can't believe I did that or why did I think that style of clothing was in style? No, 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 oh my goodness. But, or that hairstyle, why did I have that hairstyle? Or, or why did I wear these colors together? Those colors don't belong together, all right? Like green and, green and like mustard yellow. That just does not sound very appealing to me. Anyway, some of you guys are like, it sounds like vomit. Stop talking about colors. Anyway, um, but to, are we learning from the past mistakes that we have? Or are we quick to jump back at those things time and time and time again? <clears throat> All right, let's continue. Proverbs chapter 17. Uh, we have about 20 minutes or so. I don't think I will be that long. Proverbs chapter tw- uh, 17. <clears throat> All right, and in verse, we will look in verse number 24, Proverbs 17, verse 24. Wisdom is before him that hath understanding, but the eyes of a fool are in the ends of the earth. Well, what does that mean, in the ends of the earth? All right, wisdom is before him, first off, is uh, is his very countenance, or, or the wise Christian, or the Christian that has his eyes set in, the, in, the, in the, the, the proper channels in the right place, his very countenance or gestures or looks in his eyes, he, he never loses sight of the goal. It is, uh, it is the mark at which he constantly strives for, at which he constantly aims, and the rule by which he lives, by which he walks. It's, it's, a, it's a purpose, it's a driven uh, life. And, uh, and the fool has his eyes to the ends of the earth. All right, his, the fool's uh, steps are not ordered, uh, the fool's steps are not mindful, but the fool, in this instance, will wander hither and thither in the pursuit of earthly vanities, minding those things which are um, uh, most remote from him and which least concern him. No uh, definite object in view, he pursues hundreds of different things as they come uh, uh, his way and fritters away the power from God at which would have aided him to obtain wisdom. All right, basically... Uh, put the cookies on the bottom shelf, materialism. Where's our focus? What, in our daily walk, where, where, are, where is our eyes set to? Where is our goals for this church? Where's the, where are the goals for, our, for our, uh, our, 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 our spiritual walk, our Christian walk? What are, we, what are we striving for? What are we working for? Are we working for things that we, can, that we will not take with us someday as we leave this earth? Are we, are we striving for things? Not that it's wrong to have nice things, but I, I feel that working with teenagers especially, let me tell you, um, we had a young man that just, uh, just got a job, um, uh, his first job, 
He's, uh, he's 17 and a half. He's almost 18 years old. He got his first job. He works in Kent and uh, a wonderful young man. He's grown so much. And, um, and he's like, hey, I'm getting, you know, he's had, I think, two paychecks, maybe three paychecks. Anyway, the first, uh, the first week that he was going to get his first paycheck ever, he said, hey, I'm going to get my paycheck this week. I said, oh, okay, okay. And we started talking a little bit about what God's word has, you know, uh, gives us uh, different instructions on, on our finances. And I said, oh, you're going to tithe on that, right? And we started going into, <laughs> he's like, uh, yeah, brother Josh, good. All right. But uh, anyway, so uh, he, he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to tithe on it. I'm like, all right, make sure you do that, man. And so we just started talking and, and he started going into, oh, I'm going to get a tablet. I'm going to get myself a 32 inch TV to put in my room. I'm like, oh, okay, okay. I'm just scratching my head. I'm like, Oh my goodness, all right, well, I mean, hey, go after the things that you enjoy, but I said, but again, uh, is that us? Are we constantly chasing after the things that are not laying ourselves up treasures in heaven someday? Where, is, where are our, our, our eyes, where are our steps taking us on a daily basis? Because it's easy to lose sight. In America, to where we're constantly uh, uh, attacked by billboards, constantly uh, uh, invaded by radio commercials, where we're constantly invaded by, as we're sitting in front of the TV, uh, night after night after night, these different commercials, and, and you'll get emails from Amazon, oh, oh, right now, 20% off of this awesome hot new item, and, and uh, eBay, and all these different, uh, different uh, sites, and uh, I don't know what site some of you ladies uh, go on Wish or something. I don't know. I heard, I heard something. Anyway, some of you ladies are laughing at me. But um, anyway, but there's all these different, and, and, it, and, it, and it can be overwhelming sometimes. We can stress ourselves out even sometimes. You ever find yourself stressed out over the silliest things, over stuff like that, like, I just need this, or, or just this, this anxiety that you get? How unfortunate that we live like that, right? How unfortunate. But um, we don't see the, the importance sometimes. We don't. We don't have uh, ordered steps. We don't have mindful steps. We don't have goals. We don't have the proper uh, uh, perspective and, 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 and viewpoint on our life as we should. I think sometimes we forget that we're only here for a short time. And I think sometimes we forget that this is not our home. Don't forget. We will live in eternity someday, and it's not going to be down here. And it's not going to be with your 65-inch TV. Oh, man, I wish I had a 65-inch. No, I'm just But uh, our 65-inch TV and this, this, you know, what are we doing that will last for eternity? Not for a lifetime on earth, but for eternity. Have we invited our coworkers or a neighbor or have we witnessed to a family member? And that's, let me tell you, that's not easy to do. Have we witnessed to a, 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 a friend? Have we, have we uh, uh, helped out uh, in, a, in a ministry here at the church? There's so many different things that, that we uh, could keep our eyes on, the proper things that we need to keep our eyes on. Let's continue on quickly. A few more minutes. <clears throat> uh, all right, turn to, again, we're still going to be in Proverbs. Turn to Proverbs chapter 17, verse number 10. Proverbs chapter 17, just a page over, I believe. Proverbs chapter 17, verse number 10. A reproof or correction entereth more into a wise man, are we wise this evening, than a hundred stripes into a fool. A fool resists punishment or resists correction. All right? Are we allowing ourselves to be corrected by God? Are we allowing ourselves to accept the punishment for our wrongdoings? All right? Are we allowing those different things? Wise Christians will allow reproof or rebuke to penetrate deeper into their mind and produce a great reformation in our hearts and ourselves. Rebuke makes a deeper impression upon a wise man or a wise woman than the most severe uh, of chastisement upon a fool. A fool does not see the importance or the need to change. And uh, as a, as a, again, uh, just being honest with you, as a teenager, I hated taking correction. I hated getting correction. Not always that I, although I did, not always that I thought I was always right and my parents were just being parents and just doing whatever or, or, or you know, I, I, as, a, as a young person, as, especially as a young man, I think sometimes I got a little ahead of myself. I felt like that I knew better than my own parents. <laughs> I, I laugh at myself now. Anyway, and, um, and I would not take correction. And you know what? I would pay the price. Whether I like that punishment or not, I would feel that punishment, whether it was from my parents, because I did exactly what they did not want me to do, or whether it was by the hand of God, or whether it was just the outcome of the sin or the nonsense that I was in, just the natural 
end of what I was involved in. And I did not like to take correction. It took me quite a while. So I would have to say 22, 23, and I finally clicked. Now, I'm pretty dumb, so it took me quite a while. Maybe some of you guys learned a lot sooner than I did. But uh, it clicked, and I even got to the point where I came home, and I said, you know what, Mom and Dad? I told them this. I said, hey, thank you for correcting me. Thank you for raising me the way that you did. Thank you for being hard on me. Thank you for being maybe, when I thought it was a little bit more harsh than of, a, of a punishment or a penalty than I should have, thank you for being hard on me. I would not be the man that, that I am today with, without your guidance, without your, your, um, your loving, uh, a firm hand. And um, are, is that us this evening? Um, are we, uh, do, we re- do we resist correction from the Holy Spirit? Do, when, when pastors hear preaching or if we're listening to a sermon on the radio or if we're listening to a preaching seat or, or, or if we're at a conference some, somewhere and the Holy Spirit's kind of firmly but lovingly tapping us on our heart and saying, hey, this is you. Hey, I, you need to get this taken care of right now. You need to come to the altar right now. You need to correct some things. We need to have a, a, a one-on-one discussion down here at the front. Do we just stay in our seats? And grip the front of the pews. I'm not going to do this. Nope. I, I think I'm okay. I'm doing just fine. You know, what's our excuse? Are we resisting correction? Are we afraid of the punishment that comes with that correction? Because let me tell you again, God is not out there to make sure that our lives are miserable. But God is a firm, loving Father, and He will correct us when needed. And you know what? In the end, that's exactly what we need in our lives is a firm correction from God sometimes. And are we going to like it? No, not always. But do we deserve it? Yeah, we do. But I pray that we'll be mature in our spirituality and, we'll, and that we'll realize the importance of that and that we will not be as, uh, as the fool that the Bible, uh, that God's Word tells us about here. Last one. See, look at that. Look at the time. All right. And now I just lost all of you. You're on Snapchat and uh, looking at your text messages. Sorry. Anyway, um, I'm just messing Proverbs chapter 28, last one, folks, Proverbs chapter 28. There's many, many others. Actually, I would encourage you to do a study. Just look up uh, the word fool in the book of Proverbs. There's so, so many, dozens and dozens of, of different uh, examples of, of, okay, I definitely don't want to do that, or I should be this, not this. It's, it's pretty amazing. It's, it's very um, informative in, in its, in its uh, principles from God's word. All right, um, Proverbs chapter 28, Proverbs chapter 28. Verse number 26. All right, let's start reading. Um, uh, he that trusteth in his heart is a fool, but whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool, but whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. Now, if I'm not, uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9, the Bible tells us that the heart is deceitfully wicked, uh, excuse me, deceitful above all things and desperately, desperately wicked, who can know it? Yet the fool will trust in his own understanding. Yet the fool will trust in his own, uh, uh, his own heart or smarts, all right? But the Bible is clear in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, that not to trust our hearts, uh, not to trust in, in our wisdom, but of, uh, in God's wisdom. All right, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, all of us know it. Trust in the Lord with all mine heart, with all our heart, every bit of us. Many of us will give him pieces of it. Many of us will give a part of the pie to him, right? It's very hard to give him all of our heart. Let's be honest. We have our likes. We have our ideas on how we should live. It's our life, right? Yeah. It's very hard to completely give ourselves completely over to him. But it says, specifically it says, God says, listen, hey, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understandings. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. God says, listen, you will be blessed. Your life is going to be so much easier. I will give you the understanding, the knowledge, the wisdom, and the, and, and the things that you need. He says, listen, he says this. He says, I need you to trust me. I need you to lean not into your own understandings. I will direct your paths. And it says, in all thy ways, again, are we acknowledging him in everything, in every decision that we make, no matter how big or how small, are we acknowledging him? It doesn't say right there that uh, it's supposed to be um, just in this area or that area or just a a little bit of our life. But no, it uh, uh, it says, in all thy ways, in every facet, 
That means in your relationships this evening, whether between you and your husband or you and your wife or you and your children or you and your parents or you and your neighbors, in all your, in all your relationships, are you acknowledging Him? And in all of your goings throughout the day, are you acknowledging Him? Or are we trusting in ourselves to accomplish the things that we ought to accomplish? Are we neglecting the counsel of others and of God? All right? The fool shall receive his full destruction. And you know, this ties back in with the first point. This ties back in, again, to that fear of God that sometimes we just, that we just lack sometimes, whether it's not necessarily by, by choice, but we, have, we lack that fear of God because we don't daily devote ourselves and we don't daily acknowledge Him because we don't have, and we don't have that fear because he's not, he's not in our mind. We get so busy, and I, and, and be honest, uh, I am at fault at this many times. We get so busy in, our, in the daily grind we get so busy in trying to pay the bills. We get so busy in trying to get things accomplished at the church even. You know, it's not uncommon for us to come to church and uh, have no uh, mind for, for God whatsoever. As we're sitting here listening to pastor preach on a Sunday morning, or as we're in our Sunday school classes, the la- we're having a hard time paying attention in, in God's word, right? Or, have, or, or God is having a hard time speaking through us or, or to us because our minds are so distracted. We didn't take time that morning to say, all right, can't do anything about the problems that I'm going to have to face this upcoming week. I need to leave them at those doors right there. And as I walk in, Father, you know, Holy Spirit, Father, you know, God, please just speak through me. If I'm a teacher or Father, you know, uh, please uh, allow me to get what I need. Allow me to be fed today the things that I need to, 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 to have in my life. All right? But um, again, a few short things. Uh, we are out of time this evening. Thank you so much. But um, our, our, as we go back through these things, are we resisting a correction? Are we uh, trusting in ourselves? Are, are we being a, a, a foolish Christian this evening? Are we despising wisdom? Uh, do we have the proper kind of fear? Do we have a fear for God at all? Uh, are we, are we uh, 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 causing strife? Are we slandering one another in our church, in, 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 in our Sunday schools? Are, are we um, not learning from our past mistakes? Where is the, uh, the goals and where are the things that, uh, of God? Where is uh, uh, our, um, uh, 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 the... Uh, the end of, of, of our day's uh, uh, goal, are we, are we thinking, okay, what am I going to accomplish for God today? What am I going to accomplish for God this week? Um, but let's, let's think on those things. Let's, if, if, if maybe God spoke to you this evening, I don't know if he did. Just a short, quick uh, little study on some of the verses in God's word. But if um, something maybe spoke to you, maybe this evening, maybe when you go home, maybe when you get uh, next to your bedside, maybe take care of some of those things this evening. I know that studying through this, there was a few things that... that came to my mind and said, yeah, that's me, or yes, that's me. I've been a little foolish in this area as a Christian. Or, yeah, I'm definitely not the wise Christian here. I definitely need to work on that. And I pray that it's uh, been a blessing. And let's, let's pray and let's uh, get, get you guys out of here. Let's, let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this evening. Father, I pray that as, uh, as we continue to study your word, as we continue to grow in your word, as we continue to uh, uh, come to church, as we continue to serve uh, in, in, in your church, Father, and continue to love people and and as we continue to get older, I, I pray, Father, that you'll continue to convict us and you'll continue to uh, make us uh, uh, the, the, the people that you would have us to be. And sometimes that means correction. Sometimes that means a firm punishment from you. Sometimes that means that we need to fix some things that uh, we may have uh, wrong or we may, may not even realize sometimes. Uh, uh, just, just through going through the daily grind, Father. Sometimes we don't acknowledge you. Sometimes we don't do the things that we ought to do. But yet, uh, I know for a fact that the group of people that are here tonight, we do love you and we do want to do right. And we're, we're just uh, uh, hopeless sinners and that's why you had to die on the cross for our sins. And I pray that you'll, you'll convict us where we need convicting and that you'll, you'll grow us where we need growing, Father. And pray that we'll have a safe trip home. And again, Father, I pray you'll be with Pastor and his family and I pray that they will have a, a, a great vacation. And I pray we'll be here uh, again Sunday morning. Amen. Thank you. Have a good night.